All right, so somebody was asking me a question on my YouTube channel about these two by four floor joists. They said they have two by six floor joists that run straight down the house like this, all the way from one end to the other, two by six. But the two by six, very last joist is gonna be on this end beam here. So you're gonna have one running here. And you're gonna have one running here on this thing and then they'll fill them in every probably 16 inches I would hope um, down through but the next thing they do in order to hold the outside walls up because the floor joists are running vertical and not crosswise with the house they put these cantilevers out like this this is a cantilever and that's what holds up the rest of your house so if your house is sagging on the outside walls and the middle seems to be higher, it's gonna be because these little cantilevers have dropped down. What you're gonna to have to do and what we're doing on this one, because it has two by fours floor joists, which should be a two by six, and it has a two by four band We've got the same sway back going on because these things just won't hold up them exterior walls for 30, 40 years or the life of this house. So what you're gonna wanna do is, come on out here on the outside. Of course, this is not permanent. We don't have it straight up and down and leveled out and everything. We just have this in here temporarily because we're working on that bedroom floor. The band is good, it's been replaced. Your house is not going to have the uh, support that mine has coming across this way because your last two by six is going to be back there and your next one's going to be just hanging out here, just like this one. The two by four I have though, you're going to have a two by six, just like the floor joists. So you're going to want to come out here with some treated wood. Get some nice treated wood. You can use two by four, you can use two by six whatever you decide to go with, but you want to set your top plate right about here. You could actually go in, you know, quarter inch if you wanted to. You're gonna run into your members that, that come out like this and you're gonna to have to just go in between them. Um, but every two feet, I'm gonna have an, an uplooker. But this whole house is gonna have this right here with uh, some support. It's gonna be pushing up so it never, because eventually it's gonna settle. Um, so it can't go any further than that. You're gonna to wanna to build this around your whole entire outside walls. I would suggest starting on a back corner right here. Probably if your house is sagging, find out how much and jack it back up about half of what it has sagged because you don't wanna go all the way. Just in case it causes a problem because it took a while to get there, you don't wanna take it all back at one time. So you cut it about a half inch taller than what that measures and you want to put your board in there. Beat it in, jack the house up, stick your board in, let your jack down. Move over here to your next brace. With a level, four foot level, you can actually level that from that point to that point. And uh, build yourself a wall. And so that's what we've done. This is, this is going to be the wall. And as you can tell on this house, just as our other houses, the other one we had outlet because it had been hit, damaged, bent. See that bending in that? That's because when they moved this place in here, it got, apparently they had an issue. And it turned these things, messed them up. Bent a lot of them. And actually, let me show you the other side, there's actually missing. This whole back plate, that's the back plate that was right there. We took it off and fill that in with wood, that's gonna be all covered up. But right here, look, look at this thing. When they moved it in here, apparently it hit a end of the ditch or something because this thing dropped hard, hard, hard on something. And all the braces down through here were bent. So again, we jacked up this wall. We put some good, good pressure on that too uh, to keep it up. And, and like I say, you wanna put your top just inside of 
<coughs> where your flange is right here because we're going to replace this flange with new probably wherever we can but your underpinning will go up here down here you can nail it to this and nail it to your top or screw it whatever way you want to install it but that's going to be the best way to underpin your house this will be by the time we're finished basically a straight wall from one end to the other or as straight as the house is itself from one end to the other and we'll put our underpinning to that so that's where we're at and that's how you would hold up the outside walls of your house if you're having an issue if your floor joists are run lengthways of your house them in my opinion and these in my opinion are the worst the worst ones to have to um, take care of maintain repair because if you start getting your wall sagging you have to build a wall under it that's all you can do build that wall put your underpaint on it there I'm probably going to use hardy board painted with oil based paint all the way around front and back corners edges everything and install that up here and that's going to be a pretty solid underpinning because the last thing you want is rodents and anything else to be able to get up under your house and do what they already did here like they did this one so i think the siding's going to end up coming off anyways they're going to uh possibly put some hardy board here um new windows whatever I don't, i'm not sure exactly what they're doing they put some osb on the walls let me see and then vinyl siding windows all that kind of good stuff so this kind of place is going to be nice and they got a big deep lot and there's a little lake back here and they got a pretty wide lot across here in the front if, you, if i can buy one of these for twenty thousand dollars and rehab it i'll buy one every day with a lot and something like this on it this thing could be fixed it needs windows it needs siding it needs underpinning it needs the floors fixed Prices on material weren't so high right now. You could do this for a lot cheaper. But material is outrageous. And we are using that Van Tex floor in this house. I had somebody ask me on one of my videos, why are you putting back that cheap plywood? That is not cheap plywood. It's the most expensive plywood. It's the best plywood. It's Van Tex. And that stuff is amazing. It has a lifetime warranty on it or so if you're gonna use anything on your floor, don't go back, in my opinion, and put anything in it. Out of tech, sub flooring. Like down the mid one. Shows you where your screws are supposed to go. Everywhere. Shows you the screw powder. Shows you the screw pattern. Use this flooring if you can. It's expensive. Call around, get some prices from wherever. But use this, and you will never have to replace your floor again. 